This is the story of Molly and how the Vanderbilt High Throughput Screening Facility helped her hit her target. Once there was a small molecule that lived in the Vanderbilt HTS facility. Her name was Molly. Molly often wondered what her purpose was. She lived amongst hundreds of thousands of other small molecules. Even though they were, were diverse, to look at them as a group, it was kind of hard to tell them apart. But Molly just knew that there was something special about her. She just knew that she had potential. She just needed to find that target that she could hit. But with all of the competition around her, what's a small molecule to do? She waited patiently for just the right opportunity. Molly is part of the Vanderbilt Discovery Collection. This is a group of 100,000 compounds of diverse chemical makeup used in primary screening, an early step of drug discovery, when thousands of small molecules are run in an assay to determine if any can be found with the desired effect, such as antagonism of an agonist response at a receptor, or the result in a particular phenotype. There are other collections for screening within the Vanderbilt HTS totaling over 300,000 small molecules, both diverse collections and smaller targeted collections. Molly knew that her job was very important, but sometimes she wished she was part of one of those other collections where the small, mo where the small molecules already know how they are special, what biological target or pathway they act on such as the Spectrum Collection, NIH Clinical Collections, Kinase Inhibitor Collections, and so forth. These are many times used in validation screens before the full screening campaign begins, or they may be used to identify a pathway or pathways responsible for a particular phenotype. Molly stays with the other small molecules in a Brooks Universal store. It is a very cozy, negative 20 degrees Celsius with low humidity and oxygen. She has two places of residence inside the Unistore, a plate well with 319 small molecule neighbors, and a more private single tube for when a researcher wants just her and not an entire plate. Both dressed with barcodes. No Google map is needed to find her, just the Vanderbilt database. Part of her is taken out periodically when there is a screen that she needs to participate in. Because she is quite concentrated, 10 millimolar in DMSO, only a few nanoliters are needed when she is being run in an experiment. To make this happen, her plate home takes a trip inside the lab site Echo, where a burst of acoustic energy makes her shoot through space to the receiving plate. This is one of her favorite parts. It's like skydiving in reverse. Every time this happens, Molly thinks, maybe this will be the one. Maybe now I will be discovered. There are a few flashy small molecules that get noticed in every fluorescence-based assay by being highly fluorescent. Others just seem to hit on every target they come across. In the HTS world, we call these types of molecules promiscuous. But there are other ways to identify these bad actors before they get very far using counter screening and other secondary screening approaches. But Molly wasn't this type of molecule. She wanted to be noticed for her real and unique abilities. One day a Vanderbilt investigator came into the HTS facility for a consultation this is where many projects begin. The investigator was a brilliant Vanderbilt professor. We'll call him Dr. What. Dr. What met with an HTS staff member and explained that he had discovered a target, specifically a receptor, that is downregulated in a disease state. He wanted to find a way to enhance its activity, preferably with a small molecule. His group needed to develop an assay to measure the receptor's activity that would have a dynamic range sufficient for observing an increase or decrease in this activity. 
HTS staff and the investigator discussed the most appropriate assay to measure the receptor's activity. Would it be using the Hamamatsu FDSS kinetic plate imaging system, measuring fluorescence or luminescence response? Or should an imaging assay using the molecular devices image express micro, micro be applied? Or perhaps an endpoint assay using fluorescence intensity, fluorescence polarization, fluorescence resonance energy transfer, alpha scream, luminescence, or even a label-free method using one of the HTS plate readers would be the best approach for the primary assay. Dr. Watt and HTS decided to use a dye-based method on the Hamamatsu FDSS to measure the change in intracellular calcium release upon receptor activation. The assay was developed and validated with positive and negative controls to demonstrate that the signal window was sufficient for screening and finding hits. This was done by calculating a parameter called Z prime. A Z prime of at least 0.5 is needed for this purpose. Once this was demonstrated in a robust manner, a validation screen was performed using the spectrum collection and NIH clinical collections. Dr. Watt applied for funding for a full-scale screen using these data along with other supporting documentation from the Vanderbilt HTS facility. And then they received good news. The grant was funded. Good work, Dr. Watt and HTS. The time for screening had come. Molly heard the commotion in the Universal store. So many plates were being removed day after day. Then one day, she felt a small jolt. It was her turn. First, she was put on the echo to be shot into the working compound plate. Then she was placed on the screening system along with the other cell plates that held the biology being studied. When Molly was added to the mix during the experiment, something felt odd. She had never felt this way before. When she had asked other small molecules, what does it feel like to be a hit? They had always told her, you just know when it happens. A big part of primary screening is data analysis. Fortunately, the Vanderbilt HTS facility has custom built software for this purpose. All data and compound information are stored in a database and can be retrieved for analysis and observation. Molly was right. She was pulled a second time for Dr. Watt's screen. She and the other hit hits went through the whole process again, but this time more of her was dispensed. The Vanderbilt HTS staff running the screen performed several steps to ensure the effect observed in the primary assay was real and reproducible. First, the same conditions of the primary screen were run, single concentration, but in duplicate, along with the cell line not containing the receptor. Then there was a set of experiments to see if the effect observed was concentration dependent. After that, an orthogonal screen measuring a different biological effect of, the, of receptor activation was run. An image-based assay had been developed for that purpose. Molly and a few other favorites were reordered as powder form and many of the same assays repeated as further confirmation. Because these are now very focused studies, they may be run by someone in Dr. Watt's group. So a graduate student received training from HTS staff to become an independent user of the in needed instrumentation for these studies. Molly survived all the tests. She had really seen her potential. But wait, Molly, you aren't a drug yet. You are just a starting point for optimization. And maybe one day, possibly a few years from now, a relative of yours may be tested in the clinic. Molly was swept away to the Vanderbilt Chemical Synthesis Shared Resource, where she got a makeover. Many versions of her were made and tested in the primary assay as well as other assays to ensure that potency, stability, solubility, and other important properties were optimized. Where is Molly now? Well, she is all over the place. Many investigators have requested an optimized version of her to use as a tool compound. A pharmaceutical company licensed one version of her for further development. And of course, 
The original Molly still lives with her neighbors in the Vanderbilt HTS Universal Store. But now she knows her potential. In fact, she is fine with never being a hit again. She had her time in the limelight and she is happy.